hello everyone and welcome back to codeviz channel the number one channel for learning tech skills in our last class we talked about css drop down but in this class we're going to talk about css transform now before we begin the video please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video also don't forget we take on projects as well so if you have website projects software development data analysis ui ux graphics design whichever one we can help you run it and also like and follow us on our various social media platforms as well all right let's get on with the video so like i stated earlier in our last class we touched css drop down and we did this css drop down whereby we created a section called drop down and a subsection inside it called drop item and this is the css code we use for it right here from the drop down down to the drop item and how to make it activate and we got this result here whereby we hover on top of this it brings out this drop down menu but like i said what we are doing today is css transform so let's get started with it so first thing we do is what we head to our html here and we're just good and like always we are going to create a section so i'll just say dot box we're not doing anything serious yet i think i've used box before so let's not use box again i'll use dot um block okay yes dot block i'm going to leave this blank for now I'm going to leave this blank. I'm not going to do anything with it. Nothing's going to be inside here for now. Okay, we don't need anything inside here yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my CSS here. Let's leave a little comment to say we're doing what CSS transform. Good. Now, let's start. So what we're going to do is we're going to target the box. All right, we're going to target the box. We're going to say dot box dot block sorry pardon me dot block then we are going to give it its normal width height and everything okay so we will say the width of the block should be 200 pixels as well as the height 200 pixels we'll say the margin around it should be 100 pixels we want it to be seen you know, a bit spacey we're going to give it a background color of blue Let's make this blue show in hex code. Okay, four zeros and a double F. Let's look at our little block. All right, this is our block right here. So we're going to be transforming this block. We're going to be doing different things with it. So let's start with the most basic. So let's do, let's come here and give it, um, okay, what we're going to do is, let's come here and say dot block. Then we'll add the pseudo class called hover. You guys remember the pseudo class of hover which means to change the status of the element when the cursor touches it or comes on top of it or you know comes across it whatever you want to use so in this place i'm going to give it a feature i'm going to say transform so when we when we hover on top of it we now want to apply the transform property now this transform property can help us to reshape or play around with our webs with what our elements our html elements on our web page okay you can get silly you can get creative with it it depends on you we're just going to show you how to use it here and the different ways you can use it so you can you know work on it in your own way and give yourself something that you will like all right so let's be, let's carry on so when you do the transform property there are several things you can do with transform you can do matrix perspective rotate scale skew translate inherit on sets whichever way you want to choose you can do it all right but let's do the most but we're going to start like i said we're going to touch the first thing today but before i move on i forgot to give this one thing last one last i forgot to give the block class one last property which is position i'm going to change, change the position to relative yes that is all so let us begin so the first thing we are going to use is rotate okay we're going to use the word the what the rotate effect now when you say transform rotate it means exactly what it means rotative that is turn it either round or you know to the side now what we are doing right now is actually the css 2d transforms there is the css 2d transform and there is the css 3d transforms this one we are doing right now is the css 2d transform but to me they all fall under the same topic all right so if you give it transform rotate it's going to rotate the shape as it is what do i mean by that you can say rotate it by 40 degrees deg for degrees we are not using the set the symbol here and if you go back to your browser what will happen is if i hover on top of this box can i see what has happened now it easily rotated but 
I don't like the way the change is too fast. You know, the change is too sudden. I don't want that. Let's give it a smooth transition. So let's come up here. I will say transition. Now, see the sweet thing about the transition here. We don't have to apply any property. We've done CSS transition as a topic. So if you don't understand it, you can go back to our previous video, consult them to find out about it. But the thing about transition is that normally you are supposed to target the CSS property when you call that transition. But at the same time, you don't need to target it. You can just say transition 0.7s. That is 0.7 seconds. That is 7 milliseconds. And if you come back to your browser, it will just apply an animation effect to it like so. So you see the sweet thing there. So basically what this transition does is that it will affect all the CSS properties. Any property you add to this over here, it will what add an animation-like effect to it. That's what it's going to do. So now that we're giving it transform, we'll take by 40 degrees. You can see how our shape slowly turns 40 degrees. Okay. Now let us see. Now when you use the normal rotate by you know 40, 40 degrees, a positive you know value, a positive variable here, it rotates clockwise if you want it to rotate anti-clockwise all you have to do is say rotate by minus 40 degrees and you come back here and et voila it's rotating anti-clockwise but we're not done all right this is the normal rotate you can do it rotate x rotate y so let's try those out we we'll say rotate on the x axis oh sorry that is the 3d transform okay let's do it we we'll say rotate on the x axis that is x that means now it soon turned the way it turned before you know the, the former one the box turned clockwise and anti-clockwise this time it rotates on the single spot you guys will see it just hold on so rotate on the x axis by 60 degrees yes by 60 degrees and let's come back here and if we do this i see what it did now now this box didn't grow shorter it is trying to rotate all right if you want to really see the effect let's do rotate y rotate y axis come back here now look at it guys what it's trying to do now it's trying to spin that's what the body strikes what it's trying to do so when you use the rotate x or rotate y what you're trying to do is you're trying to spin the element all right but when you use the normal rotate figure you're trying to turn the elements either clockwise or anti-clockwise that is the simpler way of putting it when you use the normal rotate you're turning your element clockwise with the positive variable or anti-clockwise with the negative variable but when you use the term rotate x or y rotate x or rotate y let me use rotate y come back here that means you're trying to what spin your element on the spot so you can do several things with this you can get creative you can get crazy you can get silly you can get you know mad creative with this so play around with it as much as you want and there's still more it's not just rotate we have on that transform no we also have what is called the translate we have translate now what translate does is that it doesn't mean to change it to another language no it's not going to change to another language translate simply means move this element that's what it simply means okay so what i'll say is move it to the left now to do it translate x and y i have to enter the vertical or horizontal position i want my box to my element to move at or move to in this scenario i have to enter the vertical and the horizontal position i want my element to move to so let's come here with that we're going to say translate 50 pixels that is move it you know vertically sorry horizontally by 50 pixels and vertically by 100 pixels that's what we are going to do now you can see i put a comma and a space and if you come back to your browser here when i hover on top of it what do you see it goes vertical by 60 50 pixels and horizontal by 100 pixels that is what it does that is the word translate it moves the element for you all right now this one is the shorter form of using translate normally you can use translate x and translate y well, you can say translate x like so and say 50 pixels then we we'll come back here and say transform translate y and we'll use 100 pixels and if we come back here only one of it is applying as you can see normally if you use animation all of them will be applied together so that is why we use this one here the normal translate sorry let me remove one let me remove this x let's comment x out so we can see the translate y that moves vertically sorry this oh 
sorry pardon me that was a slip of tongue we are going to comment out x sorry i made a, a little blunder there don't judge so we comment out x and yeah it moves vertical it moves horizontally and that is it but you can't use the two of them like so unless you're doing maybe animation then you have to apply it you have to apply maybe the x in one stage of the animation and the y in another stage of the animation but basically this is what you get but if you want to apply the two of them together you say translate and then you just put what 50 pixels by 100 pixels and you get this lovely effect here let's put a semicolon there come back and you get this lovely effect okay that is what the translate transform again there is more we have the scale and we have the skill so we can say scale now what the scale does is that it increases the size of the element all right scale it up scale it up or you can either scale it up or scale it down but it increases or decreases the size of the element and just like translate you have to what now what you have to now is you have to enter the value for the width and the height now you can either decide to enter the direct value you want or you can simply multiply it what do i mean by this if you want it to increase by a certain value let us say the width is 200 pixels here and the height is 200 pixels i can say okay let the width be 600 pixels and the height be 400 pixels and let's go back and look at it now look at it what do you see nothing is happening right good so now what will happen is if you want this scale to actually work you just have to multiply the values you don't really need to you know what is going to change it directly so let's do that we'll come back here and then we'll say multiply the width by three and multiply the height by two that is all come back here and boom you can see it now the little guy is moving everywhere let's see let's give it margin or two and let's see what happens <laughs> yeah that's shaking the whole page let's not do that anymore <laughs> all right i was just to play around with it hold on let me see margin 100 pixels or two ah yes now it's in the center so you can see what scale does it increases the width and the height now if you want to increase only the width or the height what you do is you do scale x or scale y so scale x you put in a figure that is the x axis is what the width so i'll see multiply it by three come back here and light and you can see that it has what enlarge the shape okay you can see it now that's very nice or you do scale y Remember, this Y and the X must be capital letter on each one you're doing. Y and X must be capital letters. So we say scale Y, and we say three. We we'll do two, and if we come back here, yep, the height has increased as you can clearly see. And again, there is more. So after this, after scale, we also have what is called skew. We have skew. So let's try skewing it. So what you do is you say skew S K E W, and I'll say skew it by twenty degrees and sixty degrees. Now, what the transform skew does is that it drags the element. Like how do I explain it now? It drags the element from its edges. Now skew enlarges the size of the element but skew pulls on the edges of the elements now it is not trying to expand it it's trying to reshape it by pulling it that is what it's trying to do so see so what i mean by it here now if i come back to my browser here's what you get can you see this can you see this it didn't expand or reduce the shape it is simply what pulling it on its edges dragging it out all right that is what it's doing it's like when you take um a rubber a, a balloon and you try to stretch out a balloon balloon why right, the the width gets thinner why the thing gets longer so you're pulling on it and that is what skew does okay at the same time we can also do skew x and y so let's try that we'll do skew x remember the x must be a capital letter say uh 40 degrees there's no stress i've been too much come here and look at what it does it's skewed on only one side that is what the left and right edges that is sorry on the x-axis and if you do skew y let's make this 90 degrees you can see how you really pull it out okay 
So that is the transform here. You can, like I said, you can play around with it. But if you want to apply multiple to it, what do you do? You use the matrix, the matrix property. Now, this one allows you to apply all the transform you just did. It allows you to apply it to your work. So let me, sorry, let me, I forgot, let me list down all the transforms you did. I'll comment them out as I'm missing them. Transform, um, rotate. Then we have the rotate X. Slash rotate Y. And we'll see this one. What does it do? It spins the element respective axis then we also touch scale we touch transform scale and we see what a scale does scale increases the elements width and height depending on the values entered that means only two values let's be specific here two values entered I didn't put depending here sorry about that and we have um, skew <sighs> and what does that do it um, pulls on the edges of the elements depending on the values entered okay i believe this summarizes everything about what we just talked about here with this css transform uh so the next thing should be this matrix we're talking about here let's go back to the matrix so like i said the matrix property allows us to enter all all these other properties inside one declaration as we want it okay it allows us to enter all these properties inside one declaration as we want it and it starts from rotate followed by scale now it enters six variables like this matrix enters six variables at once and the variables are like so using so the way it works is you have to first start with okay you know what let me comment it out when using the um, transform matrix property, this is how you enter it. All right, let me comment it out for you guys first. Transform matrix. So the way this one works is you start. It enters. It takes in six values, and the six values are takes in all other rotate other transform values. So it transform value um, variables variables and in this order in this order yes in this order the order is it starts with um what's the again scale x followed by skew y skew x skew y translates x uh, let's see what's the next one then translates y yes 
so this is how you enter your matrix i believe skill skew skew that is three skill translate translate that is six yes so you must follow this order when entering the values the transform values for this matrix variable here so let us try it out we start with the skill x so we say skill x remember by using skill you just multiply the value so we say skill on the x-axis by three that's the width and skew on the y-axis by four deg four degrees yes comma then we now skew it on the x-axis by maybe eight degrees we don't want to do it so much then we scale it on the y-axis by what five that is the height by two then we translate it um 50 pixels by 100 pixels i highly doubt this will work but let's go come back here reload and boom nothing happened and i knew nothing will happen why make this 50 pixels by 100 pixels here zero 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 each come back nothing still happened yes come back to this degree here make it eight and four don't enter unit of measurement just enter values now it has worked that is all but we know exactly what we entered right and that is the way the matrix works so that is all the transform properties in css now like i said this is just the basic it is left for you to play around with it anyhow you want and with this we are done with the video for today please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be updated whenever we post a new video we also have a whatsapp community whereby we engage our we engage our audience's questions inquiries and also we give them queries to keep their mind sharp please if you want to join that community check the description below this video and you will see a link to that don't forget to also follow us on our respective social media platforms okay we really love to have you there and please if you like this video feel free to like subscribe and comment on that if you have any questions please ask us we are more than happy to get back to you all right we also take on projects don't forget so if you have a project you want to take on please feel free to reach out to us and we'll help you out with it once again this has been code vase we thank you so very much for your time do have a nice day ahead